So now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Kennedy Center Millennium Stage, the Smithsonian Jazz Masterworks Quintet.
Thank you very much. Good evening. We are the Smithsonian Jazz Masterworks Orchestra Jazz Quintet. And before we go any further, I'd like to introduce you to the members of the band. This is Jennifer Krupa on the trombone. <laughs> on piano, we have Mr. Tony Nalker. <laughs> Bass, the incomparable James King. <laughs> on drums, we have the executive producer of the Smithsonian Jazz Masterworks Orchestra, Mr. Ken Kimmery. <laughs> uh, my name is Lee Pilzer. And we are very happy to be here tonight to bring you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, tonight we're gonna bring you some of the music of uh, what I like to think of as our foremothers. Uh, some of the women jazz musicians, particularly from the first half of the 20th century that uh, uh, were out there doing it when it was uh, not easy for anybody to be out there doing it. And our first piece is called Diggin' Dirt. And it was uh, from the library of the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. That was a band, an all-female uh, big band, that started in 1937 as a student ensemble at the Piney Woods Country Life School. And they used to travel around and do fundraisers for the school and eventually broke off and went pro. And they traveled uh, nationally and internationally. They did uh, USO tours. And uh, they did several armed forces radio services broadcasts, and that's how we are actually able to hear their music now. So if you go YouTubing around, you can find that. And this was uh, from one of those broadcasts. And we're going to go on with another tune that uh, came from that same series of broadcasts, uh, something with the rather quip cryptic title, Don't Get It Twisted.
Thank you very much. You know, the Sweethearts were remarkable, not uh, only in that they were an all-female band traveling uh, in the 1940s, an all-female big band, but it was an integrated group. And some of the stories that the women have to tell about their travels as an integrated group in the South in the 40s are really very moving. And uh, two years ago, 2011, the Sweethearts were honored uh, as I during Jazz Appreciation Month at the Smithsonian and uh, some of the surviving members of the group were brought in and they had several panel discussions which are really quite interesting and fortunately uh, the Smithsonian made those available on YouTube so you can hear these women talk firsthand about being taken into people's homes at, at great personal risk to their hosts and um, it's, it's extraordinary stuff so uh, if you go to YouTube and uh, I think you can look for Sweethearts of Rhythm and uh, Smithsonian Jazz event launch. It's all in two, 2011. There's, I think, two one-hour videos that are really, really quite interesting. So I invite you to do those if you'd like to hear their stories firsthand. Um, we're going to move on now to the woman for whom the festival upstairs, taking place upstairs, is named Mary Lou Williams. And she was really a complete package. She was an educator. Uh, she was a fantastic pianist, and she was a composer and an arranger. She was one of the first big band arrangers. She began writing in the 1930s when big bands were just coming in. Uh, she wrote for Jimmy Lunsford and for Benny Goodman, for Duke Ellington, and uh, for the band with whom she traveled as pianist, Andy K Kirk and his 12 Clouds of Joy. So the next piece we're going to do is one that was recorded by Andy Kirk's band, I believe, in 1936, and it's uh, it's has continued on to this day. People still play this fantastic tune, Walkin' and Swingin'. And this features, uh, after the statement of uh, melody, an instrumental interlude section, a soli section that she scored for trumpet and three saxophones. And um, many trumpet players have rued the day she ever did that. I think they term it a knuckle buster. So uh, 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 Jen and I have included this in our arrangement and uh, hope we uh, carry at least some of the spirit of the original solely with it.
Tony Nalter on piano, and James King on bass. Mary Lou Williams was uh, also the complete package when it came to her uh, sort of musical palette. She was well versed in pretty much every major trend in jazz through the 20th century. She started playing stride and boogie woogie. She was uh, there for the swing era, as we've just heard. Uh, through bebop and beyond, she did a free jazz concert, a duo concert with Cecil Taylor. She incorporated some contemporary ideas into her larger scale works later in her life. Uh, so to give you uh, an example of you know, two sides of Mary Lou Williams. We've heard her swing era compositions. Now we're gonna bring you one of her bebop compositions. This is called In the Land of Ooh Fla D. Thank you. 
Ken Kimmery on drums. Jennifer Krupa on the trombone. We're going to continue on with a less well-known composition of Mary Lou's. Uh, this is called JB's Waltz, and we are going to feature our own JB, Mr. James B. King. Thank you. 
Thank you. We're going to move on to the music of another female jazz performer who has particular resonance for us. This would be trombonist Melba Liston. And uh, Melba Liston, like Mary Lou Williams, was a very fine instrumental performer. She also taught. She also composed and arranged. And many people know of her primarily through her long association with uh, pianist Randy Weston. They collaborated on a number of projects where she arranged his music. And uh, that might be what comes to mind for many people when you hear her name. But she was uh, really a very prolific composer. There's quite a few things on deposit at the Library of Congress. And uh, there's a Melba Listing collection at a university. And, uh, they're, it's a little harder to find them on recording, though. And one recording that does feature two of her compositions was uh, something, it was a side by Frank Rehack, and it, the name of the recording was Jazzville Volume 2, and this was back in the days of LPs, so he was one side of the LP, and there was somebody else on the other side. And the group was uh, Frank Rehack and Melba Liston on trombones, and a fellow named Marty Flax on baritone saxophone. And this next composition that we're going to do comes from that recording, and this is called Zagreb This.
you, Zagreb This by Melba Liston. So, uh, Melba Liston, again, uh, widely known as an arranger and also known uh, as a side man, person, side trombonist, uh, as a member of several uh, large jazz ensembles. She started in Gerald Wilson's big band. She played in Dizzy Gillespie's big band and actually created uh, rather a bit of a furor when uh, Dizzy, who was based in New York, Melba was in California, and when he formed his band, he sent for Melba and several of the gentlemen in the band, let's just say they weren't exactly gentlemen about it. And then they heard her play, and uh, you, you can look up the anecdotes, but uh, there was no question that she belonged there. Uh, she also played in Quincy Jones's big band, and if you are familiar with the Jazz Icons DVD set, you can see her come, and I think, believe it's My Reverie, she comes forward and plays a lovely solo on that. But for all that she did, she recorded one, one album as leader. It's called Melba and Her Bones, and it featured Melba and uh, I think four other trombonists in various combinations. And um, fortunately, you can actually get that now on uh, digitally or on CD, and it's been packaged. They, they actually just call it by the one name, but the Frank Rehack sessions are also on the recording. So you get two for the price of one, and you can uh, hear Zagreb this as well as uh, the other tune we're about to play. But the recording was called Melba and Her Bones. And this uh, next tune was from that recording, and this is called Blues Melba.
Thank you, Blues Melba, featuring James King. Well, we want to thank you all for joining us today, and we'd really love to thank the Kennedy Center, and particularly Kevin Struthers, the Director of Jazz Programming here at the Kennedy Center, for bringing us here to be with you and to be part of the Mary Lou Williams Festival. And uh, thank you. And this is just a reminder that uh, the Millennium Stage features free performances 365 days a year, and they are always free. And you can watch them live webcasts, or you can see archived video uh, about a day or two after an event takes place. So if there's something you want to see or revisit, go to kennedy-center.org slash millennium, and you can see what you like. And uh, we really want to thank the sponsors that make that possible, so the Kennedy Center and all the sponsors. And then we thank all of you, because without you, uh, there'd be no reason to be here. So once again, we are Jennifer Krupa, Tony Nalker, James King, Ken Kimry, my name's Lee Pilzer, and we're going to leave you tonight with a selection by Billy Taylor. Dr. Billy Taylor was the founder of the Mary Lou Williams Festival here at the Kennedy Center. First year was 1996, and so this is his composition, Capricious, and we invite you to join, uh, enjoy your evening and have a nice weekend.